Hey, what's up, y'all? It's David L. Gray here. I'm doing a follow-up video to my video, Confessions of a Former Freemason Turned Catholic, you know, because a lot of you guys asked a number of questions, and a lot, a lot of good questions that I want to get to. So the first question we're going to get into, a number of you had asked, well, well David, you are a member of Omega Psi Phi, Greek Letter Fraternity, and that ritual of, the, of Omega Psi Phi is... Some of you have said it's like a Masonic ritual. And so how can you be a Q and a Catholic, but you cannot be a Freemason and a Catholic if that Greek letter fraternity, Omega Psi Phi, if their ritual is, is, is similar? And I'm going to bulk that question in. A lot of people have asked me that question over the years. Um, uh, legitimate question, fine. And But I'm going to bulk that question in with... The broader question a number of you had asked about, well, what organization, what other organizations can Catholics belong to? Can they belong to the Rosicrucians or they can, can they be, um, belong to the Elks? Or uh, some of you asked, well, how can Catholics, why can't Catholics be Freemasons, but they can belong to the Knights of Columbus? Doesn't Knights of Columbus have oaths of obligations? Don't they, they meet in secret as well? What about that? So I'm, I'm going to group all those in and answer that now so so let's just go back to the basics of the whole thing um 1738 and you see down in the description of this video below you see that i post a link to an essay that i wrote in grad school a number of years ago about this topic about what happened in 1738 why did the papal ban even come into play so read that for a more elongated um, answer to this question but but just be succinct and brief here let's go through the four reasons that pope clement the 12th in his papal bull in enmity that is against freemasonry what he said what were the four reasons that he delineated about why catholics cannot be freemasons and then i'll jump into i'll use that as a springboard to jump into the bigger issue to answer your questions about what, what organizations can catholics belong to so in that in that papal bull um, Pope Clement said that number one, the number one reason why Catholics can't be Freemasons is that Freemasonry is an error, vice, danger, and disturbance in the Catholic Church, such as Orthodox religion needs to be kept free from, lest it, Freemasonry, breaks into the household of God like thieves and like foxes seeking to destroy the vineyard. So big statement there, calling Freemasonry a uh, danger, uh, a vice, um, an error. So in number two, in the second reason, he sort of explains, well, what does he mean by all those loaded words? How's Freemasonry an error, a vice, and a danger? Well, Freemasonry, he says, caters towards relies upon was established by what he calls natural probity that is indifferentism again freemasonry caters towards relies on was established by indifferentism and its own law not not the law of god not the the, the law of the catholic church but again it's it was established by relies on uh, caters towards indifferentism and its own law it obligates men by an oath on the bible in a host of grievous punishments and silence about what they do in secret together so let's just just stop there for a second and just deal with that because that's a loaded statement and that we really don't even need to go really much further than that um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the other two reasons but this is big if Freemasonry was established on, uh, relies on, caters towards indifferentism in its own law, then, then, then it's done. It, it's a done deal because for the, for the Catholic position, indifferentism is a heresy. It's related to secularism. It's related to modernism, uh, relativism. It, it, it suggests that nothing is essentially true that all things are equal. In particular for Freemasonry, um, Pope Clement is saying that, is saying that all religions are just the same. We're just indifferent to that. We're apathetic to that. All religions are just the same. They're equal. 
it's really just bad ecumenism that Freemasonry is proposing here. Because for, for Freemasonry, uh, from this perspective, is is saying that um, the highest good is the universal brotherhood, where all men agree. Under that are things such as that man's creeds, his religion, those, those things he brings with him. No, no the highest good, okay? The thing that unites all men, that makes them one, that makes them one, is that universal brotherhood. Okay, now this is contrary to what the Catholic Church is teaching. The Catholic Church is teaching, no, no, no. The highest good is Jesus Christ. He is the one that brings all men together into one, in his church, in his body. Okay, so see, so these are two things that can be reconciled together. Okay, so the the highest good cannot be both the universal brotherhood with all these religions, um, or in Jesus Christ. The, both of these can be true. Okay, so Pope Clement sees this. The tw Pope Clement XII sees this. And no, no, that's 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 indifferentism. Uh, being one isn't bringing all these different religions together. I mean, what's true? Is is the Jew? Is 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 Judaism true? Is 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 Islam true? Is is Protestantism true? Is Catholicism true? What's true? Freemasonry doesn't care about that because for Freemasonry, the highest good, the highest truth, is the universal brotherhood. Okay, not 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 what the Catholic Church believes. The highest good is Jesus Christ. So. Um, and differentism is a huge issue here. And then the issue of his own law is that Freemasonry was established on, relies on, cares towards his own law. Is it, a whole thing, another whole thing altogether. I mean, is that is that true? What's, what, what law is true? Is it the law of Christ in his church? Or is it the law of Freemasonry? Which which one of these are true? So as so the Catholic Church it, it sees that his, his members can be faithful to two masters. You can't follow the law of Freemasonry and follow the law of the church and be in union with the church. One of, one of, the, one of these paths you're, you're going to have to choose. You can't be lukewarm. You can't straddle this fence. Okay? So you can't serve two masters in this regard. If the Masonic law is true, the, the law of the church cannot be true. Right? So these are, these are two completely different things. So you, you can't get past number two here. But number three. Um, my Freemasons, Catholics are banned from me, Freemasons. Well, well, being that Masonic meetings take place in secrecy, they lack transparency. They cause rumor. And a faithful have great suspicions about it. Okay. There's a lot of gossip going around about these Masons. Okay. And gossip isn't good. It, it makes people uneasy. It's just not good for the soul there's a lot of questions and a lot of suspicions it is unhealthy for society societies like these number four disturb the peace of the um, temporal state and the well-being of souls okay so you see three and four are related it's like one and two are related so a number of popes will go on to after Pope Clement XII, we'll go on to reiterate this papal ban. And in 1917, this ban made it into the into canon law, where it explicitly said Catholics cannot be Freemasons or just communicate it. In 1983, when the, the canon law was republished, um, this section excluded, then it no longer explicitly said Freemasonry or Masonic associations. It implied it. Because it said the same thing that the 17, 17, 1917 canon said about because Freemasonry plots against the church is why Catholics can't be Freemasons. Um, this 18, 1983 still said it, that Catholics cannot belong to organizations that plot against the church. So it was implied, but not, the Masonic order wasn't explicitly stated. So a question arose. Naturally, um, people asked, well, Freemasonry isn't, isn't listed here. Um, is it still can can Catholics now be Freemasons? And so Joseph Ratzinger, who's a prefect to the Congregation Congregation of Faith, um, answered this question. And of course, Joseph Ratzinger later became Pope Benedict the Sixteenth. 
And he'll say, no, he say, no, no, um, the ban is still in place. The Masonic Gordo still plots against the Catholic Church. I mean, can you can you read this? I mean, it's like, do you have reading comprehension? Basically, he's saying that, no, you, it's, no, that's the Masonic Order. It plots against the Catholic Church. So the papal ban is still in place. And he wrote that Freemasonry ha um, has always been considered irreconcilable with the doctrine of the Catholic Church, and therefore membership um, in it remains forbidden. Um, the faithful who will enroll, again, this is Joseph Reisinger continually continuing this answer to the question um, posed by the uh, absence of the word Freemasonry in the 1983 canon. He says, the faithful who enroll in Masonic associations are in a state of grave sin and may not receive Holy Communion, which essentially means they're excommunicated just by the word itself, not in communion. If you're a Freemason, you're not in communion with the Catholic Church that is excommunicated um, and you cannot receive Holy Communion. Okay, and until you reconcile yourself to the Catholic Church, it means you have to go to confession, confess your sins, all right, which means you have left Freemasonry, and then you may be brought back into communion with the Catholic Church, perhaps. So, th this question whether a, a Catholic can be a Freemason is settled matter. It's, it's been settled matter since 1738. And some of you ask the question, well, what about, David, what about some of these Christian expressions of Freemasonry, such as what we see in, in Prince Hall Freemasonry? Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I've argued, even when I, was, when I was a Freemason, that that's true, that Prince Hall Freemasonry is a Christian expression of Freemasonry. And, and, I, and I've argued that Prince Hall, the founder of Prince Hall Freemasonry, his vision for the Masonic Order for black men was a Christian expression of Freemasonry. Um, you read his his charges to African Lodge, um, and, and they're they're just full <laughs> of Christianity. Um, so, and I think this is the ethos that continues on in Prince Hall Freemasonry Day. That's when Prince Hall Freemasonry, um, you see, especially in, in the Grand Lodge, Ohio, you see men like one of their um, one of the first Grand Masters, um, Stringer. He would go down. Um, establishing lodges all up and down the Underground Railroad, but not only was he establishing lodges at this time, he was also establishing AME churches simultaneously. And so this, the members of the Masonic Lodge and the members of the churches he was founding were, were the same people. Okay, the Master Lodge would be the Reverend of the church. And so up and down the Underground Railroad, so for, for Prince Arthur Freemasonry and Christianity has always had this partnership. Mozart Wolfgang up in Amadeus in Austria, yes, he's a Freemason. And they had a very Christian expression of Freemasonry there. And so, yeah, you, you, you have these Christian, so-called Christian expressions of Freemasonry. But the papal ban, it doesn't make it a distinction for whatever type of expression of Freemasonry they may be. It, it doesn't make it a distinction between what country that Freemasonry is practiced in. It doesn't make a distinction between nowadays here in the United States. You see, Freemasonry is primarily a middle-class Protestant organization. And that's different from other parts of the world, such as you see in New Zealand, Australia, and other parts of the world, where it's in, in, in sometimes in some places be, may be more highbrow, um, a more distinguished gentleman. May, they may be the, the type of people who may be Freemasons in some countries. Um, but it, it, doesn't make, it doesn't make that distinction between the United States. You see, it's just kind of like a, really, it's like a Rotary Club, Lions Club in, in, a, in a lot of ways. Um, there's a lot of charitable works. That may be a different expression as you see in, in South America where it's more secret and more elite, and they're more concerned about um, um, the inner workings of, of the welfare of the state itself. So, but the papal bull doesn't make that distinction because again, Freemasonry was established by, caters to, relies upon indifferentism and has its own law. That's why the papal ban is essentially in place along with other things. So regardless of whatever Christian expression, so-called Christian expression there may be, it, it doesn't matter. Now, what about Greek letter organizations? Um, or what about things like the Elks or the Lions or I don't know, what about the Knights of Columbus? Are these organizations that may have oaths of obligation that, that meet in secret? 
and have ritual membership rituals of initiation and well, well what about those again let's go back to 1738 <laughs> um I, I think if there's any organization any organization that that plots against the church by preaching a message contrary to what the catholic church is teaching about salvation um being through christ and his church alone okay then um then yeah it's an organization that plots against the catholic church and the catholics can't belong to it if it's preaching a message that that all religions are essentially true that there isn't just one standard of truth that Christianity is just one of many that Jesus is like Muhammad or Jesus is like Buddha. If it's offering that type of indifferentism, then yeah, it's, it's, it's an organization that Catholics can belong to. If it's an organization that's plotting against the moral law of the Catholic Church, if it's teaching something like um, abortion is okay or homosexual acts are okay or euthanasia is okay or contraception is okay, if it's teaching that as part of its, its law of that organization, then, well, that's a, an organization that Catholics can belong to because again that plots against the Catholic Church. So I think that's just the, that's the primary basic standard. And I think one of the best expressions is that in 1996, and the Bishop of Lincoln, Nebraska, Bishop um, Berkowitz, I think how you pronounce his name, issued a ban against Catholics in his diocese, saying that under the pain of excommunications, um, Catholics cannot belong to these organizations. And, and he listed a bunch of them. And yes, all them signing organizations he listed. Catholics, if you belong to these organizations in this diocese, you are excommunicated. All right? And he gave them like 60 or 90 days to, to get their affairs together. But after that, if you still belong to organizations, you're excommunicated. You cannot receive Holy Communion. You need to go to confession. Okay? But also in that papal ban were other organizations that don't have rituals that don't meet in secret and so it's, it's really one of the best expressions of what i'm saying is that if this organization plots against the catholic church by offering a different path to salvation a different moral law um or if offers indifferentism towards the catholic church then it's an organization that catholics cannot belong to and so in that, in that group that that the bishop mentioned um you had planned parenthood you had call to action you had um Catholics for free choice. And so these are organizations that, again, don't have rituals, don't, don't mean a secret, don't have a secret handshake, but Catholics cannot, cannot belong to them. They're excommunicated because these are organizations that plot against the Catholic Church because they, they offer a different moral law, a different moral teaching. And these organizations, they, they say that abortion is okay, contraception is okay. Um, call to action is just railing against the Catholic Church and against everything. You know, they, they're saying women should be priests. Um, I mean, there's just whatever the Catholic Church teaches called action teaches opposite, basically. And so Catholics came. I mean, why would a Catholic belong to organization anyway? I mean, that's the question. But but but, but the bishop would say, no, you you're excommunicated if you belong to. He took a direct action. Also, in that group, some organization called the Hemlock Society. This organization that plots for euthanasia and plots for assisted suicide. Again, the Catholic Church believes that the, the human person um, has dignity human dignity and his life was sacred from the womb to the tomb okay at every stage of development from the moment of conception to natural death that life has dignity and the catholic church wants to protect that and hold that sacred um so there's organizations again like planned prayer and hood who's at, at the beginning of the spectrum wants to take the life of the child in the womb before it emerges um him our society wants to take the life of the person outside the womb okay so both of these organizations um um, plot against the Catholic Church by by in vain against its its moral teaching that all life is sacred from at every at every stage of development. So Catholics can belong to Him on society. I mean, why, why if you're a Catholic, why would you belong to Him on society anyway? But but again, <laughs> that's a side point. Also in that group, Saint Michael Archangel Chapel. It was a it was a an affiliate of a, of a church founded by a heretic bishop named Marcel. Um, he was French, and he started this church, right? And I guess there was a, uh, an affiliate of this church in Lincoln, Nebraska. And the bishop saying, no, you can't belong to that. Church. I mean, if you're a Catholic, why would you belong to a heretic church? I don't understand. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. Um, so, yeah, so again, again, this order, that ch church doesn't meet in secret, doesn't have secret handshakes, it's not Masonic in nature. Um, it, 
is it's not plotting for the death of children or womb or outside people outside the womb like him was signing Planned Parenthood but no but it's offering a different path to salvation rather than through Christ Jesus in his church it's saying like well no you can you know you go through you know another church you kind of go around you know a Catholic church so again that's really one of the, the best examples that we see of this of, of the canon law in action Really, what the, what the Catholic Church is concerned about here is the salvation of souls. The Catholic Church sees that their that the life is just full of just potholes and just dangerous pitfalls that a, that a person can fall into. And what the Church, through its sacramental life, wants to ensure that Catholics have the best, the most narrow way to become saints, to get to heaven. And it has a 2,000-year-old track record of proving that works. Only the Catholic Church can point to some of his members who, who she calls saints and saying, Look, that person is in heaven, we know, because our members have been asking that person to pray for them, and their prayers have worked. Therefore, we know that that, that saint is in heaven, and God hears that saint's prayers. Only the Catholic Church has that tangible evidence of his members being in heaven. So we know, we have a 2,000-year-old track record of knowing that our way, if you live your life as a faithful Catholic, chances are you'll get to heaven. And again, we have so many saints to prove that it works. So that's what the Catholic Church wants to produce. And it knows that there, there are organizations out here that you can belong to that will make your path of getting to heaven much more difficult. It will take you off the narrow way. And in the way to get to heaven, it is a very narrow way. The road to lead to hell is, is very wide. Okay, And the church wants to take people off that path and keep them on that, that narrow way. So that's why she's strict. And, and that's why she obliges her members to go to Mass at least every Sunday and every Holy Day of Obligation because that's good for the soul to be there, to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ as the Holy Eucharist. That's good for the soul. Jesus Christ promised in John 6 that if you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life. The Catholic Church, the only church that actually believes that, that the communion bread is actually his flesh and the wine is actually his blood. Okay, so knows go to mass. You're obliged. If you miss mass, you have to go to you have to go to confession. Okay, you have to go to confession at least once a year. Why? Because that's good for your soul. This is the narrow way you have to go to confession, right? Because in John 20, Jesus told his apostles, "Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them. Whose sins you retain are retained." So this is authority that Jesus Christ gave his apostles to forgive sins. The apostles, the bishops of the Catholic Church, are successors of those, of those apostles. Um, this has stressed on for two thousand years. Okay, this, this, this apostolic succession. Okay, so the Catholic Church knows Jesus Christ gave his bishops, his apostles, that authority to forgive your sins. Take advantage of that because that's good for the soul. So that's, this ban against organizations that plot against the church belong to that body of concern and care and love that a Catholic Church has for her sons and daughters. Okay, so it's not meant to be mean. It's not meant to be painful. It's not to be like the, the poker finger in, in the Mason's eyes. It's not about Freemasons. It's about the care, concern, and love of the soul of the Catholic Church, of her sons and her daughters. That's what it's about. So I hope that answered your question. I'll see you next time. But until then, blessings and shalom to you and to yours. Hey, Jesus saves, bro. Jesus saves.